Innovation is a word that is seen frequently, and with good cause, but that can also affect the word's meaning. However, this video is a testament to the innovation and ingenuity of those involved in crafting these fine vehicles. I'll be taking you through the minutia of a handful of exciting machines. Stay strapped in. I'm Glenn, and let's get to it. To get notified when a new video is posted, hit the bell icon below, right next to the subscribe button. Thank you for watching Mind's Eye Design. To start, we have a next-gen aerospace company that has devoted itself to sustainable urban and regional mobility. Electra Aeros Tech allows their e-planes to carry twice the payload for even further distances than other vertical takeoff alternatives, and they do so with even less certification risk. But words are words. If you want to know if Electra has what it takes, then perhaps the contract they signed with the U.S. Air Force can convince you. It may be news to you that the Air Force has taken to the commercial market with its non-traditional program, Agility Prime. With this little startup, the Air Force looks to accelerate advanced air mobility vehicles reaching the commercial spheres. And that's all very interesting. But why choose Electra? Well, with their first product configuration reveal, Electra made a very big splash. The Electra craft holds a great deal of freedom, including the freedom from the need for runways. Electra's 48-foot wingspan bird has ultra-short takeoff and landing capabilities to utilize spaces as small as rooftops or parking lots. Only 100 feet is needed for the Electra, thanks to the distributed electric propulsion and blown lift. Blown lift is a unique aerodynamic technique that tricks the wing into thinking it's much bigger than it actually is. Aside from fancy tricks, the noise-free flight is another freedom garnered from this beautiful vessel which will keep your neighbors happy. These crafty Airbuses were designed to charge the battery while in flight, which is no small feat either. Airbus is an apt term, as the Electra can transport up to seven passengers and a pilot as far as 500 miles, and this is all while cruising at speeds of 200 miles per hour. The era for clean commercial flight is upon us, and Electra is edging the forefront. What if it didn't just stop at the sky, though? What if commercial flights to space became the norm, and anyone could just pay their way to vacation amongst our beginnings? Well, it's more realistic than you may think, and it's approaching swiftly. Virgin Galactic has made history as the first space liner to be certified by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration to carry passengers on its space planes. This ambitious company seeks to pioneer the 21st century spacecraft, opening the spaceways to all. They hope to make astronauts of everyone, and the steps they are taking may accomplish just that. There are two vehicles that Virgin Galactic uses to take you to space. The White Knight 2, a custom-built aircraft carrier, and Spaceship 2, the world's first spaceship built by a private company and operated in a commercial capacity. The White Knight 2 is actually the ferry for the Spaceship 2. Its large custom-built frame with two fuselages carries four engines. It is designed to take the Spaceship 2 to a height of roughly 50,000 feet. This concept of air launching may not be new by any means, but when it comes to commercial flight, it's safer and more energy efficient. The star of the show truly is the Spaceship 2. It's a reusable, winged spacecraft designed to carry 80 people and two pilots into space with a large amount of frequency. According to the Federal Aviation Administration, they oversee 45,000 daily flights. I would imagine that Virgin Galactic aims to see those numbers someday for their space adventures. So what powers this collection of a starry future? Why, a hybrid rocket motor that combines both solid and liquid rocket engines. 
although the most innovative feature about the Spaceship 2 is its ability to change shape in space. This allows it to safely attempt repeatable re-entries. By rotating its wings and tail booms upwards, the Spaceship 2 utilizes aerodynamic forces to control its stability and rate of deceleration. The cabin has been safeguarded, and the G-forces during ascent and descent are comfortably managed with their custom-designed articulated seats. Virgin Galactic is treading a razor's edge, and who knows where the end of that tunnel leads, but it sure is exciting to think about. I think we've been spending enough time in the air though. Let's take it back down for number three. The Iguana Pro was the dream of a single man, a boat to be enjoyed by anyone, anytime, anywhere. After five years of some good old R&D, the first launch happened, and in 2011 they sold their first boat. Every boat follows a six-step process from construction to consumer training and maintenance to ensure a quality product and experience. So what is the Iguana Pro? What has caused a ripple in the boating community and even got noticed and signed by the U.S. Navy? The Iguana Pro is an all-terrain amphibious boat built to handle entry and exit from the water, whether at the landing or on a beach. The powertrain architecture of the Iguana Pro is, of course, developed to be efficient and highly resistant because of its amphibious nature. Strapped with 900 horsepower between two 450 horsepower engines, the Iguana Pro is set to be the fastest amphibious boat in the world at 63 miles per hour, dethroning the Water Car Panther at 60 miles per hour. If you want to check out more innovative creations like these two, then check out our amphibious vehicle playlist by clicking on the card in the upper right corner of the screen. Of course, the Water Car Panther is still much faster than the Iguana Pro's 4.3 miles per hour land speed, with a commendable 80 miles per hour. The Iguana Pro's land traversal capabilities are not for speed. However, it is a slow, deliberate tool that overcomes challenges without external sources like a traditional boat. You can secure the Iguana Pro in a garage, safe from mooring fees, and it can be launched without the need for a truck or other tow vehicle. Quick waterland transitions can also make a world of difference from a military perspective, which the Navy more than likely uses it for. Not all problems are created equal. With modern transportation aiming to solve traffic congestion and ease commuting, the Sea Cleaners is on a different mission. Did you know that 17 tons of plastic are dumped into the oceans every minute? Plastic waste makes up around 80% of waste in our oceans, impacting over 1,400 species of animals. That's where the Sea Cleaners comes in. They aim to help this ailment afflicting our great planet in several different capacities. They help to raise awareness and promote prevention and accelerate the transition to a circular economy. So that we don't have any extra waste, they develop ingenious methods of waste collection and repurposing. What sort of ingenious methods, you may be wondering? The answer is the Manta. The Manta is a large, first-of-its-kind sailboat capable of collecting, processing, and recovering significant amounts of marine plastic waste. The Manta works through highly polluted waters along coasts, in estuaries, and in the mouth of rivers. With 670 horsepower of clean energy, the Manta has several pieces of equipment aboard to work with. Two wind turbines, nearly 600 square yards of solar paneling, and two hydro generators make up the means to the Manta's clean travel. 
I should mention that the Manta also has two diesel motors on board to comply with regulations, but only to maneuver at low speeds and guarantee crew safety. So let's talk stats. The Manta is quite capable. We're looking at five to 10,000 tons of debris a year. That's both micro waste and smaller debris less than half an inch or larger and up to a meter deep. Because of four collection systems, the Manta can rake in one to three tons per hour. Waste collecting conveyors bring the waste aboard while three floatable collection systems pick up the surface waste. Additionally, two small boats collect trash from the shallowest and narrowest parts of the river and two cranes pull out the larger debris. Perhaps most impressive is that the Manta is nearly fully self-sufficient and can process 90 to 95% of all waste while still out to sea. With 20 hours of work time seven days a week and with 50 to 75% autonomy, the Manta is a truly magnificent piece of tech. The Manta isn't the only piece of equipment that sea cleaners utilize. The Mobula 8 is a multi-purpose boat that can clean both solid and liquid floating waste from waterways. The sea cleaners are obviously dedicated to their cause, and they are very good at it too. Inspiring stuff, and we hope to see more. One. We come to our final stop. I hope you enjoyed the ride until this point. Before I let you go, why don't we take a gander at one last original gadget that breaks the mold. Traditionally, workboats of our era and before are primarily limited by the exponential fuel consumption to speed ratio. Engines with some heft could dole out more speed at the expense of payload size and much higher fuel usage. That's where advanced aerodynamic vessels, AKA A2V, come in. They don't like being confined by industry standards, and so they decided not to be. They are changing the rules as we know them, and we have taken notice. With the present state-of-the-art crew boats, eight gallons of fuel is burned per 62 miles per passenger, and they travel below 40 knots. With the A2V tech, not only do their craft use only 2.3 gallons per passenger per 62 miles, they are capable of traveling 50 knots, regardless of the size of the vessel. So what is A2V's secret? Well, they have put extensive time and research into aerodynamics. Seems simple enough, but I assure you it's much more complicated than it looks. Of course it is, or we would be seeing these things everywhere. The A2V shuttle is one of their hallmark vessels. You should have already noticed the sleek, curved body of these beautiful boats, and the shuttle is no different. Aside from aesthetics, though, the shuttle is no slouch. It can do the work of two of its competitors combined in terms of passenger flow. Because of this, the crew costs are nearly severed in two. The shuttle is also lightweight, and the faster it accelerates, the less it sinks into the water, reducing friction and increasing speed even further. And with some icing on top, even the maintenance costs are slightly lower than A2V's contemporaries. The fuel costs are nearly half. The cherry on top of it all is that each shuttle is made from 3.5 tons of recycled plastic. Are you starting to catch on? A2V has made significant improvements and has dialed nearly every aspect up to 10, squeezing out as much efficiency as possible. All the vehicles I went over are cause for celebration, and it is these inventions sparking hope for the future. Which one are you most excited to see released? Or is there one we didn't cover here that you are keeping an eye on? Let us know in the comments section. We love